This is a good word for anybody who you've been, you've been dealing with depression, but you've been drinking to get through it. Now, depression is something that happens to a lot of us. I mean, I don't know anybody who hasn't had a season of darkness in their life. But if I try to drive out darkness with darkness, and I depend on something in the darkness that is going to make me addicted to something even when the light comes up, the second storm is worse than the first. Now, a lot of us are dealing with loneliness right now in this season. That's a storm that you can't always control. But if you run to places in the storm that are more dangerous than the storm itself, how many times have you, have you left a place that you didn't like? And the problem is you can't change if you never stay. Staying power. Staying power. One text message can change the next three years of your life in 80 characters out of nowhere. That's the first storm, the one you can't control. And you can't do anything about the current crossing, the current and the stormy conditions. I mean, some storms are just seasonal. Some storms can't be avoided. Don't create a second storm by your decisions. See, you can ask God to protect you in the first storm. God, I don't know what to do. You do. God, I can't do anything about this. You can. But what a lot of us have been doing in this season of uncertainty, we have been creating second storms that are worse than the first. I want to have a conversation with y'all about unapologetically getting rid of all things, people, and situations that no longer belong in the new season of your life. Some of y'all came up with New Year's resolutions. You've already fell apart. You've already fell apart. New Year's resolution, Happy New Year. It's supposed to be Happy New You Year. All of your bad habits, surroundings, and situations, personal relationships that didn't make sense for your life back then. You're supposed to step into the Happy New You Year. So many of y'all are mental and spiritual psychological warfare so many of y'all are in spiritual chains you are spiritually behind all this. you are stuck you are institutionalized most of us have two eyes and we still can't see can't clearly see all of the, the scams the people's motives God sends us bold signs and wonders and tells us to change our environment and our surroundings so that we can reach the ultimate level of being blessed. I really think that if you get rid of the trash in your life, that can be people, business, and situations, you too could really, like I really believe that you can reach your full potential. I want you to fly. I want you and your career and your financial blessings to bypass me. Sometimes in order to get to better, you have to go backwards. Sometimes in order to get to better, you have to go through bad. And I'm preaching this for somebody today who has been feeling like things have been going backwards for you. The thing about it is, when God shows you a new grip called grace, for a little while in your life, it's harder for you because you're used to controlling things. Have you ever noticed if you get something new, even if it's better at first, it gets on your nerves because you don't know how to use it? And the temptation for us is, watch this, God will do a new thing in our life and he'll be teaching us to forgive and he'll be teaching us to get over offenses and he'll be teaching us to trust him and he'll be teaching us not to live by our feelings but then we look at what he fixed on our grip and we see our shot going so far over the fence and I wonder if I would actually be better off doing it the old way than the new way so I go back instead of moving forward into better when you get uncomfortable you stop believing that when you get depressed you stop believing that. You start trying to grip life like you used to. We got to go backwards to get better. We got to go all the way back to get better. That means I have to be comfortable in some seasons of my life. I have to be comfortable in my life to accept that sometimes loss is the way to gain. 
I have to be comfortable enough in my life to know that sometimes the most painful moments are the most purposeful moments. I have to be comfortable in my life to stop comparing myself so much with people who are not meant to be the standard anyway. You may have a good reason to worry about something. In your health, your finances, a dream, you've done everything you can, doesn't look like it's going to work out, stay in faith. It's just a matter of time before you see things change in your favor. Now live out of a place of peace, a place of trust. It may not happen the way you thought, but God's ways are better than our ways. God knows what's best for you. He's got this. You got a problem? It's called anxiety. Here's the solution. It's called prayer. What's the result of prayer? Peace. Maybe you're like, Rich, okay, but you don't understand. You don't know my story. You don't know about my life right now. I ain't got no time for peace. You never met my boss. Can't get no peace over there. You don't know my husband. Ain't no peace in my home. You don't know my situation. You would be absolutely correct, absolutely right. I don't know all of those factors and all of those variables, yet I'm not sure if you're listening to me tonight. What the scripture says is that when we go to God in prayer, what happens is that we don't get man's peace, we get the peace of God. The peace of God is interesting because the peace of God transcends all understanding. Meaning that God's peace is superior to your earthly situation. God's peace is illogical. So if you have a situation that doesn't make sense, good news, your God has peace that doesn't make sense. Listen, your situation might not change, but your soul will. When what you were guiding by goes away, and every day just looks the same and feels the same. Now I get the feeling like this is endless. Now I get the feeling like maybe these chains are never going to break. This storm is never going to cease. What you go through doesn't determine where you end up. What you go through doesn't determine where you end up. Who you listen to determines where you end up. Because I think right now you are walking through a valley between two voices. One is wisdom, one is worry. One is gratitude, one is grumbling. One is blame, one is faith. Wait a minute. The opposite of faith is doubt. No, 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 no. Doubt doesn't keep you from having faith. Doubt gives you something to have faith for. But blame will block faith every time. Blame will always block faith. A subject that altered my life forever. It was just unbelievable. I hadn't known my mentor, Mr. Show, very long until one day he said, Mr. Owens, let me see your current list of goals. He said, I've had a lot of experience and I've been out here for a while. And he said, let's go over them and maybe I can really give you some good ideas. And I said, I don't have a list. He said, well, he said, if you don't have a list of your goals, he said, I can guess your bank balance within a few hundred dollars, which he did. That got my attention. I said, do you mean my bank balance would be a lot bigger if I learned how to set goals? He said, drastically bigger. That got my attention, so I finally said, hey, I want to learn how to set goals. It is a fantastic skill to develop how to design your own future. So make the note, life best lived is life by design, not by accident. Not just, you know, walking through the day, careening from wall to wall and managing to survive. You know, that's okay. But if you can start giving your life dimensions and design and color and objectives and purpose, the results can be absolutely staggering. Key phrase, here's a chance now to use your imagination. Because the imagination builds cities, imagination conquers disease, imagination develops a career. Imagination sets up a relationship. Imagination is where all tangible values and intangible values begin in the imagination. So what you've got to learn to do is use this powerful resource. Now sometimes all by ourselves, it's a little difficult sort of to get it going. That's why a little workshop like we're going to do today is sometimes very helpful. When someone does a little coaching and says, how about 
this, this niche is I never thought about that. That ought to be easy to do. And the first thing you know, you're going. And uh, that's why that is so important. But now, tapping this resource of the imagination and thinking about your future, thinking about tomorrow, as early as tomorrow or the rest of the day, and thinking on out the rest of the year, on into the next century, on into the early years of the next century. A workshop like we're about to do helps call your attention to that so you can use your imagination to start prospecting for the future, what could be possible for you. We're affected by our dreams, our vision of the future. You want to make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Some people live in the past and let their life be continually pulled and influenced by the past. And yes, we must remember the past and review the past to make it useful to invest in the future. But here's the key. Make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Now, if you're skimpy on your dreams, if you're skimpy on your objectives and your purposes, if that isn't very well planned, then it doesn't pull very hard. Then you have more of a tendency to be pulled by the past or to be pulled apart by events or circumstances or to be pulled apart by distractions. So in order to save yourself from being pulled apart by distractions or pulled back to the past, you want to now start really designing the future so that the greatest part of your attention and focus and pull, like a magnet, pulls you forward into the future to accomplish your goals. If you take a seed and throw it on the concrete and walk off, the sun just burn it up. Yeah. Got to have dirt put on top of it. In my mind, it doesn't make sense that to grow something, you should dig a hole, put it down in there, and cover it with dirt. Logically, that don't make no sense to me. But oh, though, see, dirt is necessary for growth and development. Dirt builds character. Dirt gives you the push-through factor. Dirt makes you come with it when you don't feel like coming with it no more. All of y'all that had dirt thrown on you. And dirt ain't always what you want. It's somebody talking about you down on your job. It's somebody accusing you of something that you didn't do. It's somebody telling you you ain't gonna make it. That Everybody get dirt put on them. But see, when you're getting put under that stress, please know God is always working, so I smile. Because I know he back there. See, that dirt builds character in you. When they talking about you, it teaches you to withstand it. Then it gives you something to push through. So when you put the seed and you put the dirt on it, if you understand stress, stress really ain't just dirt. See, they don't call it dirt when they plant it. They call it soil. Because, see, soil has nutrients in it. What the nutrients, when people talking about you, dogging you, lying on you, backbiting, stealing from you, they're actually putting nutrients in you. They're building character. You got character now. And now the dirt is necessary so you can prove yourself. Everything you see above ground that blossoms and plants and grows and that's beautiful, it was underground one time. But if you're weak in learning to set goals, if you haven't really worked on this that we're going to work on, then that is a solution you need to consider. Goals are like a magnet. They pull, and the stronger they are, and the more purposeful they are, the bigger they are, the more unique they are, the stronger they pull. If you have excellent goals and high dreams, here's what they also do. They pull you through, pull you through all kinds of down days, down seasons. They pull you through a winter of discontent. They pull you through distraction on every side that says, look here, look here, look here. Strong, powerful dreams like a magnet pull you through that. Strong dreams and goals pull you through a disaster. Some people get swallowed by the disaster because they have nothing on the other side of the disaster to pull them through. A bad day can almost overwhelm you if you don't have something really purposeful to go for at the other side of that day, at the other side of the difficult time, at the other side of the down time. If you've got plenty out there to attract and pull, it'll pull you through all these things. And very little of it will attach itself to you. You'll be able to get through some of the most difficult times if you have this spectacular vision ahead of you of where you're going and what you're going to accomplish. Getting through will be easy or easier. So learning to set goals, it is an incredible experience. Once I learned it, it transformed my life forever. Being here today is an accomplishment of my goals. 
when I travel around the world, sit on an airplane, I say, I dreamed about this one day. I used to go to the airport and watch the planes fly away, and I said, one of these days, I'll be on one of those planes. I dreamed about it. I dreamed about the other side of the world. I'd never been to Italy, but I dreamed about it. I'd never been to South Africa, but I dreamed about it. Sure enough, step by step and country by country and flight by flight, I started checking them off my list. It was the most exhilarating feeling. Powerful. To set those goals, reach out there into the future, design something to the best of your ability, refine it as you go, tear it up periodically if you want to, set a whole new list. It's your life, it's your future. But now I would like to do it in a very simple, easy manner that you can follow so that you can use it for the future to pass on to your children, or if you've got a little group that you train and teach, or your management and salespeople, you can use this with others. So what I'm gonna go through with you here is sort of a model. Sort of, if I rush you just a little bit on getting through this model, at least I will leave you with the model that you can use later. And not only use later, but use later to pass on to someone else in some manner. So having laid this background now, here's what I want you to do. get a fresh piece of paper and this is called now the workshop and on this workshop now I want you to write down the question and then do the exercise first question list what five things have you accomplished that you're already proud of what five things have you already accomplished that you're proud of now, primarily what this is for is to, you know, give you credit for what you've already accomplished. Shelf said to me, Mr. Owen, you've already been setting goals. You know, you've already gone for something and you've achieved it. But you've probably done it haphazardly. You haven't done it with a real plan in mind. And you've accomplished some things. Now, if you start deliberately doing it, can you imagine how you can multiply the effect by 5, by 10, by 20, by 100? I finally got the message. So, first of all, you wanted to make sure I got credit for the things that I had already accomplished, especially in my own mind. You know, whether it's an accomplishment to someone else doesn't matter now, just so you recognize it for yourself. Now that you've done that little workshop, here's the second question. This is gonna take some time now. What do you want in the next 10 years? What do you want in the next 10 years? Now, under this, what do you want in the next 10 years? That is the question. I want you to make a list of at least 50 items. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to just write as fast as you can. Don't give any much detailed thought to it of what you want in the next 10 years. And just let your mind run free. Now, also remember this. This is not what you think you can get. This is what you want. If it all fell into place and you could have everything you wanted in the next 10 years, what would you take? If somebody promised you can have anything you want in the next 10 years, what do you want? I want you to approach it that way because it's not important to think, what do I think I can get? I want you to now think about what you want in the next 10 years and put them one under the other, not side by side, but one under the other because we're going to do something with this list when you finish. You don't have to just be shortchanged on this list. I mean, this list can go on and on and on. And if you're working this workshop and you've got plenty of time, you just, you know, give it plenty of time until everybody's pretty thoroughly, you know, ready now with this list. But now here's what I want you to do with this list. I want you to go through the list now, one item at a time, write down the list. And I want you to give each item a one, a three, a five, or a 10 by saying, that's about a one year goal, that's about a three, that's about a five, that's about a 10. I want you to look at each item, write down the list, and give it a one, three, five, or 10. Now, here's what I want you to do with this list. I want you to look at each item that you've numbered number one, and I want you to pick out the four most important and identify them somewhere. Either make a new list of the four most important one-year goals or circle them or put a star or something beside it. What are your four most important one-year goals? Now that you picked the four most important one-year goals, here's the next question. Why? Why are those four goals important to you? What are they going to do for you? What will they accomplish? Why did you pick those? Why? Why are those goals important? Just three or four sentences. If we don't have time to complete it, you can complete it later. If you have plenty of time doing this workshop, you just take the time. 
why are those four goals important to you? Okay, put a little star there now that those little stars mean finish later. Okay, because you can continue on with this, you know, after, long after this workshop is finished and then use it as a model to teach. Remember, study, practice, teach. Now, make these notes. Next, when the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. When the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. When people don't have strong, powerful goals, the how is almost impossible. The how is too difficult. How to do it seems like, you know, how can I ever accomplish this? The how starts getting easier and easier when the why gets bigger and bigger and stronger. Now make this note. Purpose is stronger than object. Purpose is stronger than object. Object can be powerful, object can be strong, but purpose is stronger than object. One of your objectives might have been a million dollar home to live in. Here's the big question, what for? And it's the what for that pulls stronger than the million dollar home. You know, a home is a home is a home. What for? What are, you, what are you gonna do with this place? Well, now we start with the details. And I want you to add this note. It works in communication and it works here too. The drama is in the details. The drama is in the details. Someone says, I've lost uh, 40 pounds in the last three months. We say, is that it? Those are the numbers, but what's the detail? How did you feel before? Well, let me tell you what. Now they start the drama by giving us the details. How do you feel now? Wow, what a difference, 40 pounds later. And this person starts to describe what it's like now versus what it was like before. The drama is in the details. This is what you've got to do. A million dollar home, what for? So everybody can see it from the street? That's okay, but there's got to be some more reasons. What, you, what do you want to do with this home? Then you start to say, hey, it's going to be the center of activity. You can't believe what's going to go on in this home. And you just keep describing it. And that drama now starts to really tap your imagination. And imagination is the beginning of reality. You can't imagine how close imagination is to reality until you start practicing this craft of turning nothing into something, imagination into tangible, the real stuff. How close is the real stuff? You can't imagine how close. If you start tapping into this resource of your imagination so that your purpose becomes much stronger than the object. The object is powerful and it'll pull, but the purpose is unbelievable. We must all pay the price, but the price gets easy if the prize gets large. The price gets easy if the prize gets sufficient. It's like disciplines. What a small price to pay for good health. What an easy thing to do an apple a day. I mean, a few things gives you such an incredible return that the price almost disappears. Promise is stronger than object. You got that? The bigger and the more powerful the why, the how gets easier and easier and easier. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching. Most of y'all have visions and ideas that are sent to you and you're trying to explain it to other people and because they were never sent the vision, most of y'all say, well, maybe it's not meant to be. That was something that God sent you. That was your vision, your idea. It's not his or not hers. So what ends up happening is your family, your friends, they end up talking you out of your individual experience that you have with God. Why don't you show the world who you really are? Many of us secretly feel like we have so much less to offer than what people expect.
and that even when people compliment us, we figure that the reason that they're complimenting us is because they don't really see us for who we are. If you take the lead, you will become a target. But just because they're shooting at you doesn't mean they shot you. In fact, some of you should rejoice in the fact that somebody has emptied out their quiver of arrows shooting at you and you are still here. Watch out for weeds because people will control you with a weed and you will miss your opportunity trying to be loyal to the we. And all of a sudden, in order to fit in in your sociological environment, you passed up the promotion, you passed up the position that you wanted to take because you want the people you're sitting beside to like you and accept you. I think that among the things that prevent us from acting is the fear of failure. And if you've already failed, you don't want to fail again. The pain of that, the fear of loss is another thing. Because many times when we do those things that we know we need to do, we feel that we might lose somebody. Many of us don't act because we want other people's approval. And that's not possible. Many of us don't do the things that we want to do and don't act because of lack of self-confidence. We don't believe enough in ourselves. The little decisions that you make, they matter. They add up, and you have to connect those dots. Otherwise, you don't know where you're going to end up, and it might be bad. I just beat me. This ain't about nobody else. I just beat me. If I can keep beating myself, pause, if I can keep doing that, then that means that I'm in a battle with the only person that I really want and beat, and that's me. I don't, I don't care about anybody else. I have no worry or gripe about the next man or woman's journey. That's not what I'm what I'm up against. If I can continue to outdo me from the day before, then I'm then I'm ahead. What we wish we had done is the voice of regret, speaking in a sorrowful tone at a time when there is no going back. This is regret. Why do we live our life to be validated so much by strangers? Why do we let these people dictate how we feel about ourselves? Our self-esteem, our worth depends on if they like it or not. Who cares? Those people ain't going to be there when times get hard. Those people don't even like you. Half of them don't. Those people don't really care about you. When you're about to make those extreme jumps and leaps, it's always gonna be your friends and your family. They will be the first ones to try and talk you out of what God has put on your heart to do. If you got anything left, you ought to stop right where you are and give God some praise. I made some mistakes, but I got something left. I almost died, but I got something left. Been through a divorce, but I got something left. Had to send my children back home, but I got something left. Moved back here with my mama, but I got something left. I don't know what kind of odds are against you today, physically, financially. I don't know what kind of storm has come or trying to come into your life. If you wait, too long to decide what you're going to do with your life, you'll find out that you've already done it. You have to learn to start where you are. Big doors swing on little hinges. When you start renaming it and you start reframing it and you choose to remain in it, what happens is, is you produce this word. It's called resiliency. The righteous man, he falls seven times. But he gets back up. I'm choosing today to get back up, to remain in the grind. We all have these tough moments in life. And see, they, they can make you or they can break you. Come on now. Come on. Bring it. Come on now. I had to replace fearfulness with being fearless and take the initiative to do something else with my life. 
Greatness is not inherited. It's not the result of birth, in other words. You can be born high and live low. Or you can be born low, but you can still live high. Your greatness is not determined by your pedigree or, or the family that you were born into. Your parents can be great and you can be a dummy. The key to your future is the successful management of time and change. You can't stop time, so all you can do with them is manage them. And you become what you are based on how you manage both of them. All the rearview mirror does is allows you to see what you've passed and to prevent what you've passed from coming up on you again. The windshield is your future. It's where you're going. It's where you're headed. I hope you all picked up this today. And think about that, how that affects your life. Don't dilute the vision and don't pollute it with how you want it. Don't weaken it by diluting it. Don't pollute it by adding to it. Some of the people you're trying to straighten out, they're not going to ever be straightened out. They're chickens when you're supposed to be sailing with the eagles. And that chicken that with all that gawking and flapping ain't going to ever fly. And you're just chasing behind something that's not going to ever jump over four feet in the air. You could have been soaring with eagles and you're fooling with them chickens. They're chickens. Feed them and keep on walking. Enlightened self-interest needs to be educated. I will learn that life is not just the passing of time. I will learn that life is the collection of experiences, highs and lows, laughter and tears. You must decide to act. You must have the discipline to act. One discipline affects another discipline. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Every time you learn something new, you push something old out of your brain. See, a lot of people don't want to learn now. And that's okay. That's none of your business, none of my business. But if you are one of those like me, hungry, people that are hungry are willing to learn. You're keeping your mind active because you're engaged in this thing called life. You still have a presence. You are forced to be reckoned with. You have greatness in you. Yes, I'm going for it. There are more lives for me to touch, more lives for me to transform. If you only knew all the things God has refused to let happen to you, you may have had some bad breaks, but just the fact that you're still here is a sign God's favor is on your life. There may be obstacles trying to stop you now. You don't understand it. It's because there's greatness in you. The enemy doesn't come against people that don't have anything. If you weren't a threat, he'd leave you alone. Yes, I have big obstacles, but I know it's because I have a big destiny. Had some bad breaks, but they could not finish me off. I'm still standing. Many times when God starts training you, he trains you with trouble. Exposing you to various degrees of frustrating situations and then critiquing your response so that you can learn what, how you should have handled this particular situation. Step back and ask yourself the question, what do I do that's absolutely amazing? What do I do that's effortless to me? And what makes me feel confident? Figure that out. Whatever that may be, hold on to that and focus in on that and anchor into it. So when you do go into this new skill, realize it's a process, just like the other skills you've learned on your journey. The more you practice something, the better you get at it. Now do your part. Stay in faith. Don't go around complaining about what didn't work out, what you didn't get. God will make up for what was unfair. He will pay you back for the wrongs that were done. He's a God of justice. We all get the same amount in a day. Every day is 24 hours. And some people are very, very fruitful and effective. And some people just waste their time day after day after day. And that's a choice that we make. But there's one thing about time. Once it goes by, you never get it back. So how tragic it is to waste any day of your life.
I think we need to live every day like it was our very last one and live it to the absolute fullest that we can live it. Commit yourself to learning. Feed your mind. Sharpen your interest in two major subjects, life and people. Learn more on how to get the most from life. Learn all that you can so that you can become all that you can become. Learning is the beginning of a life worth living. Learning is the beginning of happiness. Learning is the beginning of spirituality and faith. Learning and searching is where the process of creating your own personal miracle begins. Greatness does not have to have the approval of everyone. And if you are the kind of person that will have to have the approval of everyone and understanding of everyone, you'll never achieve greatness. Greatness is uncommon. Greatness is not something that you see a lot. It distinguishes you from the crowd. It makes you stick out when you become great. Disappointments will come. Betrayals, things that are not fair will come. How you deal with these offenses will determine whether you move forward or whether you get stuck bitter over what didn't work out. We find ourselves announcing our standards to our relatives, our friends, our associates. We shout our beliefs and condemn those who believe any differently, but then we don't walk the talk. Do as I say, not as I do. This is inconsistent. This leads to a loss of credibility among those who watch us. If you have a support system in place, that's beautiful. I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't really see what you see, but I'm in full support of you. Go make it happen. But in most cases, if you open up your mouth trying to explain to people what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, they will be the first people to try and talk you out. Find somebody close enough to you that has observed you or been around you that you value their opinion and ask them how do they see you and then compare what you have with what they say. See, there are things many times that people can see in us that we can't see because it's a blind spot. If you're always seeking a certain status to validate who you are, you're never gonna have peace. You can't climb up to find yourself. You have to find yourself so you can climb up. So you can be who you are before anybody knows who you are. Our dreams, the lack of sacrifice, the lack of suffering in our lives, its removal, its non-existence, also equates to a non-existence of a great life. And so embrace the fact that you're gonna to have to sacrifice and suffer to some extent. Once you've embraced that it's going to happen, it's almost not that bad. It's kind of like those of you that are fit, you've sort of accepted that before you go to the gym and get there, you're gonna to have to suffer. And we go anyway, it becomes a habit. It takes discipline to change a habit because habits are formed a little bit each day, every day. Once habits are formed, they act like a giant cable that only long-term disciplined activity can change. It takes the consistent application of a new discipline, a more desirable one to overcome one which is less desirable. We must unweave every strand of the cable of habits slowly and methodically. If it does not measure up to my expectations, I'm not going to invest my time. I don't have the luxury to waste time. I'm expecting some great things from life. So examine your expectations versus your wishes. Some people wish they could do better. But some people expect to do better. Where are you on that? I've learned life is full of wounded people. People that haven't dealt with the negative things in their past. At times they'll be disrespectful. You can't stop the offense from coming, but you can keep it from getting down in you. How much more could you accomplish if you would start letting things go? How much better relationships would you have if you would get emotionally healthy? If you would let go of what people said? Time is an amazing power. Every day, week, month, or year is a gift given to us by God. 
to complete a task. The human mind isn't used merely because we take it for granted. Familiarity breeds contempt. It can do any kind of job we assign to it, but generally speaking, we use it for little jobs instead of big important ones. Decide now, what is it you want? Plant your goal in your mind. It's the most important decision you ever make in your entire life. Oh, when you give as much time and energy to your dream, to this new vision of yourself, I'll give you all your eyes can see. When you give as much time and energy to what you see, that creates the opening for miracles of show. Do you want to be an outstanding salesman, a better worker at your particular job? Do you want to go places in your company, in your community? All you've got to do is plant that seed in your mind. Care for it. Work steadily toward your goal, and it will become a reality. Dream chasing isn't for the serious. It's for the sincere. And the difference between being serious and being sincere is that serious people have a can-do attitude. Sincere people have a must-do attitude. That's how dreams become reality. They become a must. My children must survive. My life must change. Now, if knowledge is power, if knowledge is the forerunner to success, then why do we fall short of our objectives? Do we find ourselves aimlessly wandering, settling for a life of existence rather than a life of substance? There may be many answers to this question, fundamental answer is the absence of discipline. Motivate doesn't mean to yell and scream and encourage. To motivate actually means to provide a motive, a reason why. Picture yourself in your mind's eye as having already achieved this goal. See yourself doing the things you will be doing when you've reached your goal. You know, what would you want from your friendships? What would you want from your intimate relationship? How would you like to structure your family? Well, how are you going to use your time outside of your job? And how are you going to regulate your mental, physical, mental and physical health and maybe also your drug and alcohol use? Typically, discouragement strikes at the midpoint of a project. Halfway up the mountain, you go, I still got to get to the top and then I got to get all the way back. We get discouraged when something takes longer than I expected. Once you start becoming aware of the power of thought, just look around you at everything that you see, it all began with a thought. We become what we think about. And that is probably one of the most important principles in learning to manifest. What we have to look at is basically the obstacles that we have conditioned ourselves and you notice I say that we have conditioned ourselves because I have never believed that we need to be putting the responsibility on someone else. If you're conditioned, it's because you have allowed yourself to become that. You know, if you start with the presumption that there's a baseline of suffering in life and that that can be exaggerated by, as a consequence of human failing, as a consequence of malevolence and betrayal and self-betrayal and deceit and all those things that we do to each other and ourselves that we know that aren't good, that amplifies the suffering. But you need something to put up against that. And what you put up against that is meaning. Meaning is actually the instinct that helps you guide yourself through that catastrophe. And most of that meaning is to be found in the adoption of responsibility. Anticipation is the ultimate advantage. Winners, leaders anticipate, losers react. The reason you get beat is you don't know where things are happening, so you're reacting. Reaction is always stressful. And yet so much of our life is predictable if we just were to study it, not be caught up in our day to day. It's predictable the challenges you're going to have in your relationships or with your kids or with your body. These are predictable. And if you were to anticipate these things and put a strategy in place, you could take it all out and have the quality of life that you deserve. Those that anticipate, those that lead, and then there's those that follow. The followers are the reactionaries. Things that look like they're going to overwhelm you. Remember this phrase, you are stronger than you think. 
God knew it was coming. He's already put things on the inside that you can't see right now, but at the appointed time, you're going to push back the dirt. You're going to come out of what's holding you back. Not like you were, but you're going to bloom. Don't be fooled by the dirt. The dirt is getting you ready to flourish. The system we live in and contribute to is designed to make the easiest things in life the most unprofitable. Our world is and always will be a constant battle between the life of ease and its momentary rewards and a life of discipline. Each has its own price, the price of discipline or the price of regret. We will pay one or the other. You might say there is some good in the worst of us and some bad in the best of us. I want you to become involved in an active process to get some clutter out of your life. Start working on it. I'm going home tonight to clean my closets. Let's go home. Let that be our task this week. 